How should Christians vote? How do we approach the voting booth? And what are the principles that we take as Christians into the political arena? We'll be talking about that and much more on today's episode of Theology on Air. Well, thank you for joining us today on Theology on Air. Theology on Air is uh, here every Thursday at 5 o'clock on KPFT's HD2 channel. Check us out, kpft.org. KPFT is, uh, in case you don't know, listener-supported community radio where we get to talk about all kinds of interesting things, commercial-free because, well, our listeners love us and care about us um, almost as much as Jesus does. But anyway, they care about us so much that they uh, they fund this uh, station. They give us support so we can stay on the air and talk about what is on the minds of, of those in our community. So go to kpft.org to learn more about uh, what we do, all the great shows here. And uh, you can also, of course, listen live to uh, channels like this, the HD2 channel here at kpft.org. Uh, Theology on Air, we're here every five, uh, every Thursday at 5 o'clock. We look at theological issues. You might assume that by now. Uh, you know, moral issues, social issues, and from time to time, we'll dabble into politics, uh, albeit somewhat gently, perhaps. Uh, but uh, Theology on Air is a production, really, of Theology on Tap Houston, a ministry of uh, many young adults, uh, uh, ministries, uh, churches, and so forth. And uh, they get together every couple of months to uh, talk about theology with a, a craft beer in hand. We don't have any beer, unfortunately. I do have some sweet tea, though, from Raising Cane's. And they don't pay me for that that uh, shameless promotion. Anyway, but no beer, but we are talking about important issues today. So thank you for listening to Theology on Air. If you're listening via the podcast, uh, on January 1st, you get bonus points because that's the day this podcast episode is going to drop. Of course, we can find us uh, anytime on Facebook. We are at, uh, let's see, facebook.com slash Theology on Tap Houston. We are at Houston TOT, hashtag Houston TOT, and hashtag Theology on Air. All right. I am joined today by uh, Evan Frischke. Not, not quite. Okay. I'll give it to you. All right. Uh, our resident uh, philosopher, and uh, he's on the leadership team of uh, Theology on Tap, and Meredith Mills. She is senior pastor at Westminster United Methodist Church, and I'm just going to go on record as saying I'm trying to hide my irritation from the fact that this microphone is supposed to work, and it's not, and I don't know why. So if there's any uh, KPFT uh, expert out there listening... <laughs> Uh, come help me out because we're sharing a mic with two people, and it's not the way that God intended this radio. You just th this need some more donations to come into the radio station. There you go. Give them the microphone. There you go. Okay, well, let's jump in. Um, both of you guys are have have staunch political opinions. I take it. Do we? I do. Okay. I, will, I am, have no problem telling you all of them. For all right. Hour and a half. Okay. Well, we're, let's let's basically the question is, you know how should Christians vote? And that's a kind of crass way of saying, you know, what, what are the, what are the things that we bring to the entire political arena? Like what are the, what are the issues that are important? And so what, what is the theology we take into the voting booth that says as a Christian, I'm being faithful to my tradition by voting this way. Cause this is in line with the ethics, et cetera, that, that, that I see, uh, in the church, but I wanted to each of you have about five minutes. Let me give out the phone number first, 713-526-8737. So if you're out there listening and have a question, 713-526-8737. By the way, uh, we don't have enough headphone jacks either, so if you do call, um, <coughs> that that loud echo is me pounding my fist in frustration. Y'all can't hear that because you don't have headphones on, but anyway, everyone else can. Okay, anyway, 713-526-8737. I'm also going to try to keep taps of, uh, of the conversation on Facebook. So, Meredith, why don't you get us started, uh, pull that microphone very close, and basically give, give a couple of thoughts on um, how you think Christians should vote and, and why. Yeah, so I think, in my own thinking on this matter, I think I, it would kind of fall into three categories for me. I think Christians, first of all, hold to certain principles, principles that we find from biblical witness, principles that we find from the Christian tradition. And the thing about... Um, Christianity is a lot of Christians tend to actually agree on the principles. They disagree on how to put them in the practice, right? And so the idea of taking care of the poor, like everyone agrees on that. They disagree on how to do it. Um, the idea of personal virtue and um, personal ethic, like it, people agree on that. And so, uh, um, so, so keeping the principles in mind, first of all. Um, the second thing though, and I think this is where 
where the the conversation frustrates me sometimes listening to Christians is I think that um, holding to principles without actually being realistic about how they're putting put into place is at best idealistic and at worst sometimes harmful. Um, it's fine to say that we should pass this law because this is simply the way it should be. And if the law is actually not doing what it's supposed to do and is having a detrimental effect, um, it's it's not okay to ignore that. And I hear, and a lot of times that I hear in Christian circles, um, I hear just complete um, um, ignoring of what actually happens when particular laws are being put into effect. And so I think holding to principles, but um, keeping a a, a realism about what actually happens when those laws are put into place. Um, but the third thing I would I would say, especially today, and maybe this hasn't always been the case, but it is the case in the society that we exist in today. Um, we exist in an incredibly, incredibly polarized age. Um, we inc- exist in an incredibly divisive age. We exist in, a, in an age where... Um, the 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 dehumanization um, on the sides of the political spectrum is higher than it's been in a very long time, and I think that Christians have a role in this time uh, to listen to both sides and to try to bring people together to the same table. Um, and to try to at least understand the people they disagree with. Um, so one of the one of, part of my story, I, I grew up in a household that did not have particularly strong political leanings. Um, we were, my father was a pastor. We were very involved in church, but I don't remember us talking about politics very much. Uh, when I got into college, I started um, leaning left. First of all, because everyone in college does, but second of all, because. Uh, you know, the, the message that was given to me was the left cares about the poor, Christians care about the poor. Um, that made sense to me. That was very simple and it made sense to me. And when I, when I went off to um, become a pastor, my first assignment was in rural Texas, <laughs> a small church, uh, actually a couple different churches in rural Texas, um, where I was surrounded by not just Republicans, but like staunch Republicans who did not really um, acknowledge that Democrats existed anywhere in, in the world. Um, and they were also all really, really good people. And so part of what I had to do was sit down and say, okay, you're a good person. <laughs> I need to know where you're coming from. And so I started, I started listening to conservative talk shows. I started listening to conservative radio. Oh, started, really? Hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, I, like, I can't just... Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> well, I, I started reading what they were reading and doing as much as I could to get inside their heads. Um, and there did come a moment where I was like, okay, I don't agree with everything you're saying, but I'm starting to get it. And I think if everyone did that for the other side, Mm -hmm. um, we'd have a lot more productive conversations. Because where I've gotten now is I listen, I'm so deeply entrenched on both sides. I have such um, feet in both sides of the waters, and I have so many friends on both sides of the waters, that what frustrates me the most is that nobody seems to be responding to the best argument of the other side. Mm. Um, And nobody actually seems to be acknowledging the objections that the other side has. Um, and, and so maybe that's something that's particular to our age. It's not true forever, but I think Christians could be a peacemaker's mediating yeah. voice in the, this time. Yeah, I would say it's safe to say that the political discourse at like the national level, like when you look at, you know, debates or, or just the vitriol between the two parties. Uh, you know, someone said recently that, you know, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So I think what goes on in American politics is like, Every four years or eight years or whatever, there's this. Well, you were really mean to us. You know, you impeached our guy, so we're going to impeach three of your guys. And you impeach three of our guys, or we're going to impeach five of your. I mean, I don't hear either party ever talking about solving any problems at all. It's just let's get the other people, and it makes me really sick. I do have some good news though, other than that Jesus rose from the dead. Although that is part of the good news we all share. It's that this microphone works now. Oh, yeah, great. it's amazing what can happen when you turn it on. Go ahead and give her that one because it doesn't. <laughs> You don't have to pull that one over as far. So yeah, so pardon the... I can the, speak um, again. Yeah. Okay, so apologies, Meredith, for the... Um, <clears throat> see, I don't think that microphones should have on and off switches. And so it's it's basically, <laughs> it's everyone else's fault that that microphone didn't work. It's, you it's, should tell them that someone phoned in a donation and that's why it works now. Oh, that would be so much better. <laughs> yeah, that would be so much... I see, can we backtrack? Yeah. Uh, no, it's too late. We're we're live. We're we're on it. That's why it's called Theology on Air. See, we're on air. Okay, Evan, so give us your, your, your five-minute spiel. So I... Uh, uh, I debated on wearing my, my T-shirt that said "Make Orwell Fiction Again," but uh, <laughs> um, I decided that was a little too extreme for what we're doing here. So um, 
I uh, um, share a lot of the same sympathies as, as Meredith. I come from um, uh, a, a baptized Republican, I guess, um, household where every single member of my family is uh, as Republican as can possibly be, and so was I. Um, and as I started learning about politics and growing up, I uh, um, was um, in high school and um, Obama and McCain were running against each other. And there was a lot of vitriol, but I didn't understand why it was, it was so intense. Um, it didn't appear that either of the candidates actually disliked each other, but there was all sorts of fear that we were going to become socialist and uh, that th our whole lives were going to be ruined and they were going to kill all of our, our children, but only while they're in the womb. So <laughs> the um, didn't really understand it, kind of rolled with it anyway. Um, we get uh, Romney in uh, 2012. Um, who nearly stole it away from Obama, but I still saw like a lot of. Um, okay, but why? Why? Of, but but how should Christians vote? So okay, I'm going to focus here. The uh, um, Christians should vote on uh, uh, without forgetting their faith. So um, this isn't a denial of separation of church and state, uh, but it's people that are supposed to be voting, um, and you need to remain a person while you go to the ballot box. And a lot of people are starting to forget how to do that. Um, they um, isolate this, these single issues. And I think this is the source of all the, the vitriol. Um, they, they sit on certain kinds of issues and they've stopped listening to anything else other than fear. So um, Christians should not be marked by fear. This should not be the reason that we're, we're at the polls. We should be marked by hope. We should be marked by um, a willingness to serve and love our neighbor. Um, and our religion in everything that we do, according to, to James at chapter 1, um, verse 26, is that pure religion, pure and undefiled religion, is to uh, serve and love widows and orphans and it seems like nobody's doing that anymore so um what we we need to do as christians is to motivate a um a christian kind of vote that does listen to both sides that does take into account uh people that we don't agree with and as long as we're not compromising uh particular parts of the christian faith it seems like the, a lot of the vitriol is uncaused or is uncalled for and uh it's it's not making for a healthy nation, and it's it's going to be our jobs as as Christians to tr attempt to heal where we can. Okay, so both of y'all kind of talk about the the process. Neither one of y'all said per se. I mean, granted, I was fixing microphones that I should have remembered how to how, how they actually work. But anyway, I mean, both of y'all have talked about kind of the process, like the the kind of a leaven, if you will, that Christians bring to the voting process. Um, neither one of y'all have kind of said, well. Uh, and I'm not being critical. I'm just trying to summarize. Like, uh, you know, the, the Christian point of view is this, and so these are. This is how we'd come down. We'll we'll look at it kind of issue by issue if you're if you're comfortable with that too. But um, there are some, and maybe I'd put this question to Evan. There are some who would argue that the the left general, the political left in America, is so far removed from a kind of Christian worldview that they don't merit. A good listen that they don't that that there's there's it, it's not it's a non-starter to even consider what they have to say w would you go that far um only if i could go farther so okay. i would want to double down on it and say that everyone except us is wrong like that's the christian claim that we're yeah. right and you're wrong and everybody still deserves the the decency of of being heard and attempt to be understood yeah. Yeah. so it wouldn't even matter how wrong they are um, we should still hear them out and give them the respect that that they would deserve as as yeah. mature adults. Yeah. So Meredith, I'd ask you the same question, but in reverse, and definitely don't be bashful about bringing that mic right up right up to you, or even holding it maybe. Um, but um, what about um, like? And, and I'm not trying to say that all, all your friends are leftists or anything like that. <laughs> um, but but generally speaking, would. I mean, don't people kind of, I mean, from what I hear, like at KPFT even, like what I hear is that people assume that everyone on the right is really not worth listening to either because mm. all they want to do, mm. they might want to protect babies, but they basically want to kill everyone else, yeah. either through warfare yeah, a, or yeah. lack of funding yeah. or something. So what, um, I, so I, I've had the unique life experience of having lived in both worlds, like mm. in, in the hub of both worlds. And I, I have found an equal amount of vitriol from both sides. I mean, really, it's in, I, I thought when I was, when I was living in, in a world that's predominantly liberal, um, 
I thought it was a higher level of vitriol. And then I went to a world that was dominantly conservative and I found an equal level of vitriol. Um, and I, and it's interesting. It's the places where people are in fact the majority that they seem to feel most attacked. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So like in the middle of East Texas where there is like no danger of anything, like they're going to pass a right. law like prohibiting, you know, I don't yeah. know, like yeah. um, communism. communism or yeah. something like that in yeah. the middle of, you know, middle of Austin where there's not a Republican to be found, yeah. um, then it's, it's, the, no, that's it, very it's true. The yeah. Thing. If you, if you listen to like right wing radio, that's a hard thing to say, right wing radio. Yeah. Um, basically it's, you know, let's dig in the trenches. Like everyone's coming out to get us. Everything's about to, it, it's a disaster. Like we're always on the brink it of is, disaster. Yeah. If you listen to KPFT, it's the same exact thing. It is, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, but but just from a leftist point of view, the Republicans are out to get us, the conservatives are out to get us, it, it, everything's always a disaster. And it's like I said, it's fear-based. Um, so I think that's one of the things, like, maybe I, I struggle with, or I think maybe some Christians struggle with, is like, how, how are we hopeful, but still take seriously, like, certain issues, right? Like, we're sure. hopeful, but we're not, Sure. you know, we're not putting our head in the sand. Well, so I have found that most people have never actually heard the constructive argument of the opposite side. So one of, um, one of the things that I've often tried to do when I get into conversations with almost anyone now is to simply say, um, my understanding of the other argument would be X, Y, Z. And most of them have never even heard that mm. because, because the media is not it, it, there's not intelligent conversation going on. They don't make money with intelligent conversation. I mean, there's not. Like, there's not intelligent <laughs> debate going on. Um, and so I, I, I feel like that's almost. It's so simple, but it's 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 a role that very few people are taking right now. Well, I think that media is generally built around um, finding your echo chamber and exploiting it for all that it's worth basically sure. you know um that's kind of how you make money I well i will say one of the things i'm very proud of is that facebook cannot peg me um so i still see all of all of various posts of mm -hmm. of everyone um which is how i know that i've you know both their algorithm hasn't figured you out no yeah no because i click on everything there you go i click yeah. on everything um yeah. and so and so yeah i you know i can show you memes from both sides and it's literally you could just you could just switch out Republican or Democrat yeah. and it would be the same thing. So Evan, Christians are supposed to be nice. We're supposed to come into the process, you know, hopeful. Does that mean that we don't still have very strong points of view about some issues? Uh, of course not. So okay. the, uh, um, is it Romans three where he talks about we've, uh, we're saved by the spirit and therefore we should we need to be lived, living by the spirit, something like that, the, that are, um, any sort of, uh, distraction yeah. or any sort of like, um, um, apathy is uncalled for mm. regardless. So, um, the, uh, it, no, these things we should abs absolutely care for. These are some of the best ways to love our neighbor. Um, government is a wonderful and powerful tool and to neglect it would be, uh, just to neglect anything else would be to bury our talents and yeah, some way or fashion. Right. Yeah. I, I think that's a very helpful parable. Oh, we're getting a phone call. You ready for a phone call already? Yeah. We have so much more to talk about. We just got started. Okay. Y'all can't hear the phone call, unfortunately, but let's see what we can do. Hello there. Hi, this is Will. Hey, Will. Did you, did you, want, you want to be on the, uh, the radio today? I have to ask that before you say anything else. Yeah, I would love to be on the radio. All right, cool. Well, Will, um, so, so you know, only I can hear your question. So I'm going to have to, so I'll listen to it and then I'll share it with Evan and, uh, and Meredith. But what's the question? All right, awesome. My, my question for uh, Professor Frisk, um, and regarding uh, universal health care for the United States, how is a Christian supposed to approach that? Because uh, I, I, I don't want to tax my fellow men and women to death, but at the same time, I'm worried about lives being sacrificed for those who don't have access to health care. All right, great question. That's definitely number one on my agenda. So thanks very much for calling, Will. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. And by the way, what channel? KPFT. KPFT is 90.1 FM. Awesome. I'll be the one. Yeah, sorry. And I can turn it on right now. Absolutely. That's the HD2. It's the HD2 channel. So you can listen online, or if you have the digital radio, you can find us there. Awesome. Yeah. I really appreciate it. All right, man. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, 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 thanks,
Okay, guys, healthcare. Let's just dive into the policy issues. Um, universal healthcare, Professor Frisk, is uh, that was directed towards you. So, uh, but you can both comment. But basically, the question is, how should Christians approach universal healthcare? Uh, I roll my eyes just because I, I shouldn't do that. But I, 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 that phrase "universal healthcare" could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But let's just say universal healthcare, maybe one payer, Medicare for all. Single payer, I don't know what you call it these days, but um, how should we approach it? So, um, single payer healthcare sounds great. That the, the government's going to uh, essentially supplant itself as the middleman, so that way any sort of um, profit margins that would fall to um, insurance agents and uh, uh, the like would ultimately um, go to the government and thus reduce expenses. This is generally how almost everybody on the left talks about it, as it's it's a cost reducing thing for the large majority of people. Um, the it might be a little optimistic. Um, the The government does not always run its programs very smoothly, and it will essentially run this through contracts anyway, which would be from the same exact companies that are already making big bucks that we're thinking of here. They think it's going to be a, a huge fix all, and it's just not. So, so do you um, think Christians are bound to support universal health care or free to support the? I don't know what we have now, quasi-capitalist um, healthcare for profit model. We are uh, bound to, uh, to help others in their, in their health. Um, the, we, we must love our neighbor, including their bodies, um, from conception until, until death. I'll go ahead and, and make my little pro-life yep. statement there too. That's um, the biggest issue and, for you. And the government is a wonderful tool that if we neglect, we are doing something wrong. Um, but at, do we absolutely have to have universal health care? And I'll say no. What do you, what do yeah, you come down on that? I mean, so, so I, I think the principle we all hold is um, we are required to care about, um, uh, we're required to care about everyone, not just people who can afford it, um, but everyone from um, the family struggling to make ends meet to the homeless guy on the street to, um, it, so that's the principle that we all have. And, and the question is, how do you do it? And, and my, I have not been convinced that the um, suggestions that have been made for universal health care would actually work. Um, and, and so that's, that's, that's where the realism comes in. Mm -hmm. I think if I were convinced that they'd work, it'd be a different, it'd be a different thing. Um, but just because of, I mean, uh, the United States is just a different, different mm -hmm. animal than a lot of the other countries that have tried it. Yeah. So if I can comment a little bit more, I, yeah. I like the, the stats. So, a long-time sentiment has been, let's be like Europe, because Europe, every single country has some sort of universal health care, yeah. um, single-payer system. Um, Canada does as well. There's many other countries that have single-payer systems. Um, the, the way that most countries in Europe fund this is through a VAT tax, which is essentially works like a sales tax. And these taxes are, um, argue, are argued by the same progressives that want the, the single-payer system to be regressive. But that's precisely how they fund this in the first regressive place. Regressive meaning it falls more on the rich than the poor. Uh, uh, regressive is it falls more on the poor than the rich. Oh, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Regressive. That's so progressive. The, the, sorry, the okay. progressive leftists. So the, the the not even just like the the anti Biden crowd also on the left. Yeah. The um, the um, they don't want that taxes. But if that sentiment of let's be like right. Europe, like it's it's a, it's a giant right. sales tax. So the higher the sales taxes, we, we all have to pay the yeah. sales tax, and you, the less disposable income you have, so then you you get hit the hardest. It's it's yeah. questionable whether it would it would benefit the people that we want it to benefit if we're right. actually funding it in the ways that are tried and true. Yeah. Is it possible to finance universal health care through massive taxation on yachts? Uh, there's not enough yachts. <laughs> okay. There's just not enough yachts. Darn it. That was my idea. That was what I brought to the table. So, okay. Um, let's look at, um, I was going to ask a, an, another foundational question or two. Um, so here's one. Um, Lutherans like to talk about law and gospel. Methodists, I don't know. Do y'all like to talk about that sort of thing? But I mean, we're not against it. Okay. So we're it, not like anti-gospel. I hear you. It, it, it's, it's kind of a Lutheran... Uh, it gets a little stale after a while, maybe, but you know, we basically look at the Bible was it law or gospel, and um, there can be reductionist ways of thinking about all that. But that said, you know, we we tend to think, you know, either in the Bible you're going to see God telling us how we ought to live and what we ought to do, or the gospel, which is what God has done for us, so we therefore have certain freedoms and such. Okay, but when you think about these sorts of issues or your political worldview or, or something else. Um, would it fall more under the category of law? Does the law of, is the law of God something you would actually consult to still say, oh wait, the law of God says this, so therefore 
I might ought to think about these issues politically in this way, or is it a matter of the gospel freeze and you know and 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 we're and, and you know we're so, we're supposed to be nice to people as a result of the gospel. So uh, anyway, I mean, would you think of it in terms of law or gospel categories? So, uh Maybe I should let you in because I, I I'm not sure those categories would actually make sense for me when I was thinking about how to vote. Like I would I would think realistically what's what creates the most shalom. Like realistically, like what actually creates the best world for people to live in. Um, and so I mean, what what comes to mind when you're talking about law and gospel is you know you've got a you've got this criminal. Do you impose like a harsh sentence or do you, or, or and and in my mind the answer to that question is like what does the most good. Um, which is like what what would create a better society? Like, I mean, the whole prison system. Does it actually work to create the kind of society we mm -hmm. want to work? I don't think that's that's necessarily a, a punishment or freedom question. That's a, I mean, that's just a, a realistic what do the results say question. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think one of the principles that Christian voters should take to the polls is that the government is not going to save you. Mm. Um, that's God's job. And uh, trying to hope in the government is to replace some of God's function. Um, and a kind of uh, refined idolatry, if you will. The uh, um, Christians should know that the government is not going to, to actually save people, um, but the government is, is, again, is a tool that, that we've created um, in order to um, help ourselves. It's um, um, d blessed by God, of course. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's not going to be the, the rock of our salvation in any way. Mm -hmm. It's not going to solve all of our problems. Um, we're always going to have problems to deal with. Uh, and... Um, to try to look for like now it'll finally be better solutions isn't going to happen either so you need to go into the polls pragmatically understanding like what what kind of costs and and am i going to take if these laws get passed and things like that like what kind of culture really are we are we shifting yeah. into yeah the reason i ask is because it it seems like most people to my political left who are christian and who understand their politics from a very christian point of view they 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 tend to have a kind of um gospel reductionist mm -hmm. view of things where it's like okay you know jesus has they won't even talk about the gospel in terms of jesus dying anymore but i mean you know like it's basically like well i'm free and we're free and um i don't even know how to, how to put words on exactly but it's kind of the idea of well i'm for all the, all of the progressive ideas because jesus was all about love and all the progressive ideas Love, by the way, is the law. But anyway, all of the progressive ideas are about loving neighbor, and it's all the nice things. I don't want to ever have to tell anybody no because the gospel is all about inclusion and, 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 and et cetera. And what I never hear, really from anybody, I guess, but I, never, I don't ever hear people saying, you know that whole thing in Leviticus where like God says, this is how we ought to live with our neighbors? Like immigration, for example. I mean, if you wanted to be in favor of immigration, you I, I don't think you should do it on the as a, I'm just speaking out of turn, maybe. But I don't think you should do it on the basis of the fact that um, we ought to be really nice to everybody. But, you know, cite the specific law. You yeah. know, this is right. what the law says about welcoming the foreigner, uh, things of that nature. Now, I might not agree with that argument right. per se, but anyway, it. It, it to me, the law actually gets short shrift in this conversation. Well, but, I will say what you do here. I mean, I, I do think your characterization of, of the left is, is a is a bit shallow because they will be very um, harsh is not the right word, but they will be very stringent toward um, accumulation of wealth, toward mm -hmm. over accumulation of wealth, toward, I mean, capitalism does not necessarily breed generous souls out of us. It's not like it's not that it's a bad thing. Um, they will be the the language drawn from scripture um about mistreatment of the poor i mean i it's not all just love and goodness um yeah. it's 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 um it's judgment targeted um and it you know it probably ignores some of scripture but you know yeah. i think everyone everyone, everyone kind of ignores some of scripture yeah um I, I, my re my read of the left is that it's targeted judgment at the people who currently have power in whatever way yeah. um which unless it's nuanced then becomes a self-eating animal because then you know people get empowered and they come um but at its best it um it it could you know it, it it puts a hamper on the natural human tendency to want to um 
um, oppress people underneath us. I mean, I, I think, um, I think from my perspective, I, I see the role of human sinfulness definitely in society. But when I think about it in the government, I don't think the role of human sinfulness leaves once you get into the government. I mean, so that's, that's, you know, I think about our criminal justice system, there's sinfulness involved in, I mean, there's sinfulness involved in every, every level of it, right? There's right. sinfulness involved in everything from policing to judges to the incarceration to everything. And so, and so if you're going to, if you're going to look at, at law, like you've got to, you've got to, include it in every single level and say like what what are we doing about all of that and i think yeah. the left probably does a better job of pointing out the inconsistencies on every level um than i've heard from the right okay yeah. you do get really far right guys like uh, mcdermott that mm -hmm. um is a theonomist and wants old testament law to become the government again um and not as a theocracy um, with sacrifices and things that yes, nature, yes, yes. but basically looking at the moral standards and some but of the civic codes as yeah the nationalists refuse to accept him because he's open door immigration because yeah. that's what he thinks leviticus points to yeah and he has this very high view of scripture and a very literal understanding of the laws and he doesn't think that a lot of these laws have been yeah. um fulfilled that especially the civil laws yeah so he's yeah. a he's a unique character yeah, they, to uh, yeah. uh to cite here in this in particular um i would think that um, our uh, and very um, scriptured centered um, theology um, mm -hmm. is uh, is also going to pull us into a different direction than a lot of Christians. I don't think a lot of Christians actually read the Bible. I don't think a lot of them pay attention <laughs> right. through most of this. Um, and so when they're they're not reading, they only remember the little bits and pieces that they might have overheard or they got when they were a kid or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what they capitalize on. And so now we're getting two groups that are both quoting scripture and they have no idea what the whole of it says. Yeah. They only know their chunks. Well, let me, let me give an example again. And, and I, I don't have to come back on this, but like, like in general, people think, well, yeah. So like, like Jesus loves the poor and we're supposed to care for the poor. And one political party seems to do that. So that's, that's who I go with. Right. But on the other hand, there are like biblical legal prohibitions against theft. Sure. Right. So if, if taxation is theft, as a libertarian <laughs> might say, um, well, no, but in all seriousness, like if, if you, if it could okay. be in some way demonstrated that there is an excessive tax burden that really is confiscatory okay. because if you don't pay it, I mean, if you don't pay your property taxes, for example, the city owns your home, right? The County owns your right. home, even though you own it outright, you know, like you paid it off, whatever it's yours. But you know, there are people that claim that that is, you know, sort of, um, it's an inconsistency. It's, it's it's like well, which one of those values kind of wins out? I think so, and 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 that's where I think maybe law and gospel isn't, but maybe it's which law because they're sure. both laws, right? <clears throat> to like care about poor people, but then there's also a law against confiscatory. I don't know, state-sponsored theft, which again, some conservatives might say that's the state in which we actually live in. So I really sympathize with the people on the left for this one. Because uh, I'm, there's very few tears that I cry over a, a rich dude not getting his third BMW. Uh, I'm not <laughs> shedding any sort of tears from this. What uh, if he sacrificed a yacht for it? <laughs> yeah, Evan like a, a whole, is right now crying because he's not yeah. going to get his third he's BMW. Not his third <laughs> BMW right. we, we don't pay him that much. Yeah. So the uh, um, the people that seem most uh, against like these increase of taxes um, would probably not be paying these taxes. They're actually the, the going to be the middle class. And the ones that it would actually affect, I don't have a whole lot of a sympathy for. Um, I see also, like, we live in the wealthiest nation at all time in all history, and we're, we think that we don't have enough money. And it's just yeah. a lie. It's just, just such a lie. Yeah. So I will add to that. I, I would find the argument more sympathetic um, if the argument was actually the ways in which the state helps the poor is not actually helping the poor. Um, which I, which was actually the first thing that made me, that made me turn around when I was doing my <laughs> Republican research was I, I, I read a really, really good article on if you care about the poor, these policies are, mm -hmm. these policies are destroying the poor basically. Um, and then, and then counter up with that argument with a, a better way to get the money to the poor is not actually through the state, which doesn't tend to do things very well, um, but through the hands of individual donors um, and whatnot. I, again, um, that relies on people not being greedy, which is not 
entirely reliable in American culture, I would find that argument more more satisfactory than than just um, I, I I yeah I'm I, I don't I thought I leaned libertarian, but I'm not sure I'm buying the whole <laughs> taxation is theft line. I'm just trying to represent. Um, that's all. No, that's that's, that's fine. I'm um, not saying I'm a libertarian. I'm just. Yeah. I mean, but I think the so the principle, and this is where Christians argue. So the principle, we all agree, we're supposed to care about the poor. And when it comes down to how to do that, it 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 does get sticky. And I think, I think for print, and this I mean, this is what I would preach from my pulpit is that for Christians, this is where it comes down to your heart. And not only what are you preaching from from uh, what what are you voting when you go to the ballot box? How many of your dollars are you actually giving? Right? Mm-hmm. Because if we are trying to create a society in which everyone supports and cares about each other without having to need a government that relies upon people giving a significant portion of their income to people who are not their family. And that doesn't happen. Like the state's not going to do it for you. That doesn't happen magically. That happens by people being transformed enough to say, I want this kind of society to exist. Yep. Yep. 713-526-8737. 713-526-8737. If you're out there listening in KPFT land, that's the number to call quickly because we're going to wrap this conversation up in about 14 minutes. Um, and uh, and then and then we'll have a few more minutes for the show. But this is Theology on Air. Uh, I'm Evan McClanahan. I'm the pastor at uh, First Lutheran here in Houston. FELC Houston is the website, and I'll make sure you guys can give websites out as well before the end of the show. But uh, we're here every Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. at KPFT on their HD2 studio to look at theological issues and social and some political issues too. Um, trying to trying to model good Christian behavior and have as thorough conversations as we can while still respecting one another, which is more than I can say for some people that run this country. Uh, (laughs) But uh, anyway, that's what we're trying to model here because we are Christians and we do actually uh, care about one another. So 713-526-8737, that's the number to call into the studio. And go to kpft.org, of course, as always, to learn more about KPFT. Why don't we just look at the big issue, uh, which is abortion, Uh, something uh, I've talked about uh, on my previous iteration of the show quite a bit. Um, but that that issue is so significant because I would argue that both political parties basically do have a the, the same operating theory of government, which is uh, debt doesn't matter, deficits don't matter. Uh, it's a, it's a, a blank check on everything from the size of the military to fighting wars uh, to... Uh, Patriot you know, Act, which is passing bilaterally right now. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yep. Um, you know, just, I mean, it's just, Nobody seems to really care about a lot, even though we, 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 we think there's gridlock in Washington. It, it's kind of like if you take a step back, it's like uh, actually like it's a trillion dollar deficit every year. And nobody bats an eye anymore. Where have you gone, Tea Party? Oh, I enjoyed you so much. Anyway, um, so what happens is that I think that abortion ends up being the issue that that determines where a lot of people will end up, because in theory, uh, one party is pro-life. And the other party, I think, not in theory, but in practice, is, is very much uh, in favor of abortion at any time, virtually for any reason, it seems like. Uh, that's what these debates seem to be bearing out. So, um, Evan, I'll start with you. I mean, where, like, I, 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 you know, is, is that issue worthy of, of, how did I put it? I said, is that issue worthy of a one-issue voter's vote? For the abortion vote? Yeah. Um, no. Uh, so I am ridiculously pro-life. It's my top issue. Um, I would compromise almost anything to get that anywhere close to um, to changed. Uh, I uh, um, don't see any sort of compromise happening, sadly. But um, um, no, the uh, we often s- tend to think that that's the the only evil that's going on, um, or that's the, we have to fight the biggest evil only first. And it's just a wrong mentality. You're going to catch yourself surrounded in other issues. Um, the uh, the lives of the of the fetus, I absolutely think is is important and should be protected by law. And so I think everybody else's lives should be protected by law. And we're not like we don't do this at all. So um, there's there's a number of of other little things that you'll get on the left that seem to respect life um, more than than you'll get on the right. So. And there's there's groups that seem to try to split this difference. There's uh, Democrats for Life tried to go to TSU during the Democratic presidential debates, and they were kicked out uh, really? for being yeah because they were pro life. They were kicked out. Democrats for they had big signs that said Democrats for Life didn't didn't work. This there's, was at the presidential debate, by the way, correct. or the yeah, or yes. the uh, Democratic candidate primary debate or whatever for yeah. Texas Southern University. Okay, yeah, yeah. and the 
Um, and likewise, there's a there's a position that's that's much more left bent called um, whole life. So um, they advocate not only protections for the fetus, but also healthcare for the mother and different kinds of education factors um, that would all supply um, family oriented needs. Mm -hmm. uh, and th these <coughs> positions are totally drowned out by a lot of people. Um, you could be able to get a, a healthy environment that doesn't um, that without having to focus that as your as your single issue. The last bit, um, the abortion rate in uh, places like Germany are lower than the United States, despite having even more permiss permissible abortion mm -hmm. laws. And then um, places like South Korea that have even stricter abortion laws mm -hmm. have higher abortion rates. So strict laws do not necessarily mm -hmm. correlate mm -hmm. to lower abortion rates either. We really need to think big picture. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs to go to church and and abide by our moral standard. I think that, that's in the solution. Germany, everyone goes to church. No, they're all members. <laughs> they're all members. That's how that works. Wait, let me ask one more question quickly. Do you think the GOP uses people on that issue? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, okay. it, it's not like the left doesn't yes, also do. use this issue. This is a very yeah. intentional wedge issue. Yeah, that they they're using as, as a fear tactic, and they okay. can both get you going. And as long as they can keep you in fear, then you won't listen and you won't try to compromise. Okay. What do you think, Meredith? Or right. So, um, I I completely believe that abortion is the ending of a life. Um, I believe that's for scientific reasons, if nothing else. Just when I dove into the science of it, um, it is one of those issues where it is a much more complicated scenario in practice than it is um, just looking at it top down. And I do not. I don't think we should make it illegal. Um, I don't think making it illegal would make it stop happening. Um, I think um, it would. I mean, it's been happening forever, and it's always a very, very complicated matter when it does happen. Um, and so if you can, like, if there's a candidate who can show me convincingly, here's the the set of laws we can pass that will ensure the fewest number of abortions, right? Whether that's a combination of birth control or education or maternal support or whatever, um, I would go with that. I think, I think an all-out ban would just, um, would would drive a whole lot of women into taking herbal teas and doing very destructive things to their bodies. Um, and I, I don't think it would work. Um, and so I, you know, this is, this is one of those where it's, it's never, you know, it's, it's never without a story. Like I've, I've walked with a number of women who, who've been pregnant without planning and it's never without a story. And it's in the idea that, um, 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 that it can that be, it as, can simple be as, as simple as, 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 as this is this is right, right, this is, this wrong. is wrong. Um, um, you know, it, you know, it, it is a problem world. world. And sometimes, and sometimes an evil, an evil is, still is still the lesser, the lesser of, two of two possible evils. evils. Um, and, um, and that's just reality of the world we live in. Um, and so, um, and so to not have that option as a possibility, even when it's, even if, if it really is the most viable situation for a family, it just doesn't seem to me. The, the way forward and I don't hear I don't hear that middle ground anywhere and I don't hear anyone saying like let's do this and we can lessen the number of women needing abortions um, well they used to say safe legal and rare and they don't say that anymore no, no they don't. Tulsi Gabbard got yelled at for saying rare right right yep. yeah so I, I think anyway so I, w I would I would anyway I'm the host so I won't say but um <laughs> okay let me let me ask about uh, immigration as well um Maybe this can be our last single issue, and then we'll kind of. Uh, one thing we're trying to do on the show is is the last several minutes we we want to kind of ask our guests their sort of least favorite thing about Christianity and, and their and their most favorite thing about Christianity. Because part of what theology on tap's mission is is to be a place for believers and non-believers alike to sort of reflect on the church, reflect on Christianity. Why do we believe what we believe, and that sort of thing. So I, I do want to uh, try to save time for that, but. Um, you know, when you, when you look at the Bible, you do you do see some texts that that talk about welcoming in strangers. You do you do think about the Israelites taking the land, having foreigners among them. Of course, they killed some of those foreigners on their way in. But you know, then there is the then there are those who who tricked the Israelites and right. and and looked and they looked disheveled and said, "Please have mercy on us." So they did, and then they anyway. So you, you, but there are sort of laws in at least ancient Israel about you know the stranger. Are those are those laws that we bring to our, the current immigration debate? Evan, you seem to be going first, but anyway, y'all can jump in wherever. But I mean, you mentioned you, this already. Do you want to? Yeah. So um, the the life issue. I think this is a life issue as well. Um, it should sit there alongside 
um, our, our pro-life sentiments that uh, the, the kind of treatment that we're giving to, to immigrants is often um, subhuman as well. Um, so uh, when you hear stories like people dying in immigration detention, like that really should be rearing, uh, really, really should be like you should, your ears should perk up um, from the same kind of desire for, for protection of life. Um, the, it is, it's not as if American citizens somehow have a greater value to, or greater rights than anybody else. Cause these lives, these rights are God given. And so to treat immigrants as if they're, they're lesser, uh, is, is totally off base. And it, part of the, the, uh, part of the frustration I have with a lot of the, the, the current pro-life movement. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I think I think people might come back and say, but yeah, like as a nation, we have a certain amount of sovereignty and we have to kind of if we don't have borders, we're not a nation anymore. We're not even doing a good job taking care of the poor in our own country. I, I'm, I'm not necessarily saying I argue that, but. Oh, so yeah. as far as like citizenship goes, we do not have to grant citizenship to everybody. Mm -hmm. We have to give people the human decency that they deserve yeah and sometimes we don't and that's yeah. part of the yeah. part of my frustration um yeah i don't know if i have a problem with with things like borders there's there is far people on the far left that say that borders should be eradicated um they kind of want to start with the states have mm -hmm. no more no more states no more local uh, autonomy then you move on to, to we would UN have elections. to get rid of all of our texas like Right, like ban the Texas yeah, flag. Yeah, that would our, never work. Come yeah. and take it. <laughs> like, that would be wrong. It wouldn't make any and, sense anymore. Come and take what? It's already yours. You know? And but but what's worse is, of course, the right, the the right uses this as fuel. They right. they they take your sentiments and then they use it as fuel to get a much powerful force that thinks yeah. you're coming to install a one world order. Yeah. And <laughs> what do you think, Reda? Yeah, I I so I don't think those laws in the Old Testament are necessarily for us to be taken literally, but they do have a, a a principle that we can see about not dehumanizing others simply because they are not of our tribe. Um, and I, I I agree that the United States needs laws and needs borders and needs, you know, I, I really think this is a practical issue more than anything else. Our immigration system is just very difficult, mm -hmm. right? If 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 we had a better system of um, moving through refugees, of moving through like um, migrant workers, of like all of those things. If if our systems actually functioned the way they're ideally supposed to, I don't think mm -hmm. there would be as much of a problem. And of course, like the 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 systems not functioning then leads to the humanitarian um, crises that Evan was mentioning. Um, and I and I think that you know again, if she can show me they've got a solution to that, I'll I'll buy it. But I think the principle is just that we don't we don't get to treat people as others simply because they were you know or it's as less than us simply because they were born in another place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, maybe kind of wrap it up, maybe kind of give a, I don't know, 30 second, one minute kind of, um, you know, summary of kind of where you might fall down. And I'm not asking you to endorse a party per se, but maybe say for these reasons, I would tend to lean in this direction, all things being equal. What, what would you say, Evan? So I, I usually define myself as center, right? Um, the, I, I understand there's inefficiencies in the government, but I also understand that um, sometimes those inefficiencies are worth it. Um, a lot of um, people on the right like to um, argue that the le the least government you have, the, like the less government you have, the better um, for economic reasons. Um, Milton Friedman is going to be just like a huge conservative econom uh, economist that I largely agree with, and that's how money works. Those just aren't my only values. Mm -hmm. I'm not only concerned with increasing the GDP, and so I'm willing to, to accept, accept some sacrifices for my Christian principles yep. in particular to try to create a culture and a, a, a life that um, demonstrates the, the role of Christ in, in me when I go to the ballot. And box. you do work, maybe not work, you work with, work for a political uh, yeah, party. So go ahead, Mitch, yeah. If, if I can go ahead and, and give my endorsement then. I'm well, the, not, not an endorsement. Ah, You're just, okay. just, just not an endorsement. Mitch, yeah. Change my mind. Yeah. Um, so um, there, there does happen to be other political parties that are, uh, that are, yeah. Uh, open and ready for for volunteers um, if neither of the the parties like you like uh, cough cough the alliance party and uh, um, which is a new political party active in 31 states looking to split left and right with a very pragmatic intelligible center all right cool okay Meredith um, honestly on almost every election of ever, I can remember um, I've been I've been split in the middle I, I seem to have feet in both waters and I can see positive sides and really negative sides more negative than positive yeah. of both of the signs I, I if i had to name i'd probably i'd probably call myself center left but 
um, I've been alienated by much of what both the right and the left have said on various things. And honestly, I, honestly, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pastor. Most of my job is to simply um, stand back and, and hold both parties to account mm-hmm. um, and, and say, these are the principles we hold to. Um, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be endorsing one or the other. So that's, I, I, you know, that's, that is, that is a great non-answer to your question. No, 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 no. Right I mean, there. no, it's, it, 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 it is a true lack that, of an yeah. answer. No, no, I, I hear you. I mean, I think, I think especially these days with like Trump, for example, mm. I think that, 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 that even conservative Christians find themselves extremely compromised. Like, I mean, if they would normally sort of just say, well, yeah, you know, the Republicans, you know, because of the abortion issue, the limited government issue, it's, you know, taxation or whatever, yeah, I mean, but but he makes things very difficult. So, you know, yeah. that's it. Okay, like I said, we want to try to end every show with a few comments about, you know, because we want to show uh, the world that we truly, really are like open minded. We we are aware of the faults of the church and the and the gifts of the church, you know, or Christianity and Christian theology at large. So, and what would you say is something you you know is kind of your favorite thing about Christianity and something that maybe we don't quite get right or could be. You know, if we could just rip that page out of the Bible, maybe, you know, maybe that'd be better. But anyway, what do you think? So uh, my favorite thing, I think, if you if you read scripture through and through, there are some ridiculously high standards and high goals that are um, dream worthy. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I, I love this, that the, uh, the kind of perfection that that we want in in society and uh, should mirror heaven. Like that's that's the kind of thing that we should work for, um, that we should strive for, that we should sweat and bleed for. Uh, my least favorite thing about Christianity is that we don't. Uh, we're very complacent. Uh, we sit around and we wait for other people to do it. Uh, and Or we, we just think that it's okay the way it is and we, we shouldn't be striving. Um, that does not change anything that Scripture has told us, and it bugs me to no end. Fair enough. Fair I'd enough. say that was like the most Methodist answer ever. For he, <laughs> he literally said that he, we're, we should be working towards per- perfection. You know? Yes, he literally, that was like yeah, a like quote. Yeah. I, uh, well, striving, it's like the one thing we disagree striving, with Wesley about. You know? I, I'll still, I, I still believe in total depravity, so I'm still very yeah. in the Reformed camp. That, yeah, no. that we'll never get there. Those are just the goals. Yeah, okay, we'll talk later. Um, <laughs> she's going to be recruiting you. She's going to so, be sucking you away look, from I Buffalo. didn't say it. He did. It was out of his mouth. I'm literally sitting over here doing nothing. Okay. That's true. Um, yeah. Favorite. So the favorite, you know, this is a weird question, by the way. Um, what? I think it was a weird. It's like, it's it like asking weird. you like your favorite ice cream and your least favorite. So my favorite thing about Christianity is, uh, is an intimacy with God. I, this is something that I... I experienced as a child in the church. I wasn't able to put words to until I was later. I wasn't able to put theological language to until I was much older, but has always been a part of my life, a part of my faith and something that I've been able to see grow in other people that then, you know, that does have a transformative effect on, on your life and how you live your life. And, um, um, and yeah, um, I, it's, it's, it's changed, it's changed everything. Um, changed the course of my life, changed, changed everything about how I live and how I see the world. So this is my favorite thing. Uh, least favorite thing about Christianity. Again, weird question. Um, well, think of, think of it from the point of view of like, I, I, I don't know, uh, the, the, the way that non-believers experience Christianity is we put a yeah. false front on it, right? Yeah. Like everything is great about it, you know? So. Well, the least favorite thing about Christianity is dealing with um, the way some Christians have interpreted the Bible. Mm. So not just like, so I, I, I grew up in a church that did not, we didn't even talk about the whole women in ministry or thing or women or like, we just were very, um, uh, re- mutual respect and mutual admiration. And like, I saw men and women building each other up. And this was just like, this was just what was modeled to me. It wasn't until I became a pastor that I started getting just like stuff from, all sides of people who were not even in my church. And I realized that the way people were interpreting the Bible was, um, was just didn't seem like it was even coming from the same faith that I was even mm-hmm. from the same faith tradition. And so dealing with what does it mean to that? I do believe in the universal body of Christ. Uh, and I do believe those people are still my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, and and seem to be reading a completely different Bible than I am. And so that's just one issue. But like, you know, you you go back 100 years, 200 years, they were doing the same thing about slavery. Mm-hmm. Um, you go back, 
however many years. And so, and so, and so dealing with the faults that Christians have had in interpreting scripture, and then also bringing that to myself of like, what, what faults am I having um, in interpreting scripture? And then, and then allowing grace in all of that um, is somehow is, is sometimes hard. Yep. Thank you for listening. Thank y'all for being here. Uh, this welcome. is this is theology on air. We're going to be here at uh, KPFT's HD two channel, uh, ninety point one FM. If you have a di- digital radio, you can find us on the HD two channel, or you can listen live anytime at kpft.org. Um, where do people find you guys? Uh, Meredith Mills, pastor at Westminster United mm, Methodist Church. Westminster is wumc.com. Okay. And um, by the way, a quick plug about Gastro Church. Oh, Gastro Church. Gastro yeah. Church is fantastic. It is intentional conversation about spiritual things over really good food. And so we intentionally set tables that are open to everyone. We speak from a Christian perspective, but we have all kinds of people at our tables. And so if you just like to talk about um, spiritual things and meet some new friends who think differently than you do, you should check us out. And is there a website? Uh, gastrochurch.org. In fact, fun fact, at our last Gastro Church, we had one table with... A, a charismatic, a Methodist, a Seventh Day Adventist, and mm. a Jewish person. Interesting. And then an agnostic at the same table. It was great. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. If that sounds good to you, you should yeah. come to Gastro Church. There you go. Evan, so Facebook. I have uh, I have no plugs. I don't think okay. so. Um, because I'm not allowed to endorse political parties. Yeah. The because uh, I, I, I end up being a congregant with uh, yeah. Pastor Evan. So, oh, yeah. um. Otherwise, our uh, our website is uh, felc.org, correct? Yep. Okay, good. FELCHouston.org. Right. FELCHouston.org. Yeah, exactly. And uh, um, our, our Bible study starts at 10, church starts at 11. Cool, man. Well, thanks for the plug. I'll, I'll take all I can get. Well, thank you all for, again for listening. Uh, if you're out there in HD, uh, HD2 land of KPFT, we appreciate you listening every Thursday at 5 o'clock. If you're listening on the podcast, uh, keep you know make sure you subscribe, right? Uh, subscribe so you, you, you get something every week. Uh, and even bonus episodes from time to time as well. But we thank you. Thank you again for listening. I'm Evan McClanahan, pastor at First Lutheran here in Houston. We will see you next week. And until then, we encourage you to uh, question freely, think deeply, and disagree as needed.